Hello everyone, this is part 2 on how to make a Flappy Bird game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be creating an infinite scrolling background and a scoring system. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, make sure to check it out, link is in the description below. Anyways, let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to add that I didn't do in the last video was to make the bird uh, be able to lose when it reaches the bottom of the screen over here. So to do that, it's actually really simple. Let's go to operators and then grab an or statement and let's put it over here. So if the bird is touching sprite 2, which are the pipes, or if the bird's y position is less than a certain value, um, let's see, if it's less than negative 171, then we want to stop the game. So let's try it out. If the bird goes to the bottom here, then the game stops. All right. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to start creating the scrolling background. So I was thinking of maybe adding some hills in the background and then making the moving slowly to the left to make it look like the bird is, you know, moving. So let's do that. So let's first create a new sprite. And now I'm going to draw my hills. All right, so I'm done with my hill. And what I did was that I just made a rectangle across the entire drawing area. And then I used this reshape tool to, you know, add a few points. And then I just uh, moved these points around to make it curvy. All right, so make sure that the width of your hill is exactly the same width as the drawing area. Uh, no more, no less. Uh, as you can see, I made this very exact. So yeah, and also make sure that the height of the left edge over here is the exact same height as the height of the right edge over here. Anyways, uh, this will do for now. And let me go back to the code. Uh, so first off, I'm going to grab a when flag clicked in the events. And then I'm going to make the hills go to 0, 0. So now it's in the center of the screen. And what I want is that I want this hill to constantly move towards the left. So to do that, let's go to control, grab a forever loop, and then let's go to motion, grab the change x by block, put it inside of the forever loop, and let's say, let's change x by negative 3. All right, so if we try it right now, then the hill, as you can see, always moves towards the left by 3 units. All right, so um, since I'm going to be testing this hill a lot, I'm going to uh, disconnect the code from the chicken and the uh, pipes. So, you know, it's only the hill. And I'm also going to hide the chicken. All right. So now this is just the hill. So, yeah. All right, cool. So now that the hill moves, now we want the hill to go from the left edge of the screen to the right edge of the screen once it reaches the end over here. So to do that, let's grab an if statement and let's put this inside of the forever loop. And we want to check if the x position of the hills are less than a certain value. So let's go to operators, grab a less than operator, go to motion, grab an x position, and let's check if the x position is less than um, negative 464. So what I did was that I found the smallest possible value for the sprite, which is a negative 465, and then I just added one. So yeah. So once the x position of the hills is less than negative 464, then we want it to move to the right side of the screen. So since I made this hill the exact width of uh, the screen, which is 480 uh, pixels or units, then what I can do is just simply uh, set x to its current x position over here, multiplied by negative 1. So let's go to operators, grab the negative 1 operator, drag it inside of the set x to, and then go to motion, grab the x position, and type in negative 1. All right, so let's try it out. Once the hill reaches the left side of the screen, 
then it teleports to the right side. Alright, so it works. It's infinite like this. Let's see it again. And alright, it works. So, uh, oh yeah, one thing I noticed was that it's not very smooth. Um, as you can see here, you can see that it sort of gets cut off early before it teleports to the right side. So I don't really want that to happen. Uh, let's see it again. As you can see, it doesn't completely go off the screen. So that's sort of something that Scratch has. And to actually fix the issue, I'm just going to go to Looks and grab a set size to block. And right before it changes x by negative 3 and checks if the x position is less than negative 464, I'm going to set size to 150%. And right after the hill moves and checks for all the stuff, then I'm going to set the size back to 100%. So like this, before all of your code, put in set size to 150%, and then right after, um, put set size to 100%. So this is sort of complicated to explain, but pretty much what this does is that um, the set size makes the hills bigger than it's actually supposed to be, which is 100%. So right before it moves, it can technically go off screen. But then right after it moves, it changes back to its original size. So you wouldn't even notice that it's 150% of its normal size. So let's try it out. And let's see. Now, oh, oops, okay. I forgot to change this to if the x position is less than negative 480. Or actually a negative 479. So since the left edge of the screen is negative 240, and the entire size of this costume is 480, then half of the costume size is going to be 240, and then once you subtract um, 240 from negative 240, then that is the rightmost edge of the sprite at the leftmost edge. So yeah, um, that was again sort of confusing, uh, sorry, but it should make sense visually. So now let's try it out again. And... As you can see, now the hill smoothly goes from the left side to the right side. So let's see it again. And alright, so it works. Cool. And I'm actually going to quickly add a uh, dark green outline because I think the light green uh, is sort of too close to the light blue color of the sky. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly add a line over here. Alright, so I'm done with my outline. I just pretty much added a line and then I just reshaped it using this tool to fit the hill. Alright, so now I think it looks better. Let's try it again. And as you can see, there's the hill. And then teleports back. So now we need to add the second hill. Because once the hill is moving, then there's a lot of empty space. And we don't want that. So to add a second hill, all we need to do is to go to control and then create a clone of myself. All right. And um, we want to make the clone do the exact same thing as the original sprite. However, the only difference will be that the clone is shifted to the right of the sprite. So let's grab a one SR as a clone. Then let's uh, go to motion and then let's drag this go to x480 and then y0 and make sure to uh, go to looks grab the set size to 150 put it before the go to xy and then grab the set size 100 and then put it after since uh, we want the clone to go completely off screen so yeah anyway since the clone is going to have exactly the same code as the original sprite we're going to create a block so let's go to my blocks and then make a block let's call this uh, move then let's click OK. Alright, now we have move. And now we want to drag this um, set size to 150 and stuff like that into the move. And now we can drag our move block inside of the forever loop. And OK, so my move block did not appear. Um, that sometimes happens, so I'm just going to refresh the page. 
there we go. So now there is the move block. And let's put this inside of the forever loop. And for the clone, let's just duplicate this forever loop and then put it under the stuff over here. All right, so now the original sprite and the clone both follow the same uh, code in the move block. So it's sort of simpler because if you want to change something, all you need to do is change this one move block instead of, you know, changing two separate uh, blocks like this. So, all right. Now let's see how it looks. So as you can see, there is now a infinite scrolling hill background. And it looks very smooth. And uh, yeah. All right. So I think there's a tiny um, difference in the line I just drew. So I'm just going to fix it real quick. Let's see. It's over here. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, yeah, you can barely tell that I have two hills. So, yeah. All right, so now that we're done with the hill background, we can add the chicken and the pipes back. So, let's um, show the chicken, then reconnect the blocks, then go to the pipes, reconnect the blocks also. And now we can try it out. And, okay, the hills are in front of both the chicken and the pipes. So we want them to go back. So let's go to looks and grab a um, go backwards. Uh, let's say 10 layers to make sure that it actually goes back. And now let's drag this um, in the win flag clicked before it creates a clone of itself. And now it works like this. All right, cool. Now we have sort of some uh, parallax going on which is pretty much um, the hill moves to the left slower than the pipes do. So, uh, yeah. Um, now we have our infinite background, and now we're going to make a simple scoring system. So let's go to the pipes, and um, let's see. We want to first create a score variable. So let's go to variables, then create a variable. Let's call this score then for all sprites, and then click OK. All right, so what we want to do is that if the bird goes past the middle of the pipes, then we want the score to increase by one. So um, to do that, we have to go into pipes, and then we want to check if the X position of the bird is greater than the X position of the pipes. So let's go to operators and grab a greater than operator and let's go to sensing grab the um, backdrop number of stage block and change the stage to sprite one which is the bird and now we have our x position of sprite one so if the x position of the bird is greater than the pipe x position so motion and then x position then we want to go to variables and then change score by one. All right, now we want to put this inside of the repeat until. And now as the pipes are moving to the left, it's going to constantly check. So now there's uh, one problem though. Um, whenever the bird is past the pipes, the score goes up by a lot because it keeps checking and the score keeps going up. But we only want the score to go up once. So um, to fix that, we can just simply create a variable. Let's name this um, already scored. So already scored. And we want to select for the sprite only. This is uh, very important for the sprite only. Then let's click OK. And let's see, where is my variable? Hmm. All right, so there it is, already scored. So um, what we're going to do is to first set already scored to no. Because uh, when the pipes spawn, then the bird hasn't gone through them yet. So of course the bird has not scored. So let's set this to no, put it um, before everything in the uh, if and repeat until loops. And now we want to check if the bird has not yet already scored, then we want to change score by one. 
So let's go to operators, grab an and, and let's grab an equal, and let's go to variables, grab already scored, and let's check if already scored is equals to no. Now let's drag uh, this over here into the left side, and let's put it back. So, of course, it also checks if the bird has already scored, and if it's no, then it changes score by one. But of course, once it changes the score by one, then it has scored. So we don't want this to call again. So we just set already scored to yes. So now it's only going to call once. So let's try it out. All right. And it doesn't quite work. Um, the score goes up by two. So let's see. I think to fix this, I'm going to make this um, set before the score changes by one. Now let's try it again. Okay, still does not work. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah, that is because we have both the top and the bottom pipe. So it acts as two clones and they both check. So what we want to do is either only make the top or the bottom pipe check. So let's only make the top pipe check. So to do that, let's grab another operator, grab an and, grab an equals, and uh, let's see, check if the bottom or top pipe is equal to top. Now let's drag this into the left side, and now let's drag the entire thing back in. Let me zoom out a bit. All right. And now it should work. So first it checks if the X position of the bird is greater than the current pipe X position, which means that the bird went past it. And also checks if the bird already scored. And also checks if the bottom or top pipe is equal to top. Then if all of these are true, then it sets already scored to yes, and then it changes score by one. Now let's try it out. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, set the score to zero whenever the flag is clicked, and now it should be good. So, as you can see, the score changes by one every time. So yeah, alright, it works. Cool. Let me try it again. And yeah. Um, now, I have both my scrolling background and the score counter. Uh, the game also ends when the bird touches the bottom of the screen, like this. So yeah, anyways, that's it for this video. In the next video, I will be adding a custom number counter for the score, and maybe some improvements to the bird, pipes, and background, and maybe add a loose screen. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe too, if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!